This is an information video about the upcoming easing of restrictions concerning the Adventist Church and opening of churches. I will share with you basic principles how to stay healthy, outline the government guidance in relation to the guidance by the General Conference of the Adventist Church, and I will share with you how it applies to the North England Conference, the NEC. What are practical ways to maintain health and well-being now that the restrictions are slowly lifting? Well, a basic way to stay fit and build immunity is to adhere to the New START principles. Nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, rest and trust. There is no better time or opportunity for us to live the Adventist health message than now. Eat the rainbow. The more colors of fruits and vegetables we can work into our diets, the better. It is not all about the vitamins. The additional fiber will keep your guts healthy too. Plan your meals around more whole grains, multicolored foods, legumes, nuts, seeds, and of course, fruits and vegetables. Avoid sweets. When we feel stressed, anxious, or bored, it's easy to reach for foods that are tasty, but addictive. Even sweet fruit juice or fruit is not good for you when eaten in excess. Stick to an apple a day and you will keep the doctor away. Of course, avoid sitting disease and exercise, especially if you find yourself engrossed by a book or by your computer screen at work. Sitting is now known to be just as bad for us as smoking, causing an increase in diabetes, heart disease, even cancer and overall mortality. You can just try to do some basic office stretches or exercises every hour and walk around a bit. But much more than just moving occasionally, the body needs aerobic movement for total health. Find an exercise you like to do and plan it in your schedule every day and get moving for at least 30 minutes. Remember to hydrate and drink water. When concentrating on work, it's easy to forget to drink and often our bodies get used to being parched and will not send us the signals of thirst. It is important therefore to be disciplined about drinking water to keep our joints lubricated, our digestion healthy and our brain functioning well and our blood flowing. Download an app on your phone to remind you to drink a glass of water regularly. Enjoy sunlight. Vitamin D is known as the sunshine vitamin and is crucial to our overall health. Sunshine helps us improve brain function, lowers the blood pressure, protects against inflammation and even kills bacteria and viruses. Airing out your home and letting the sunshine in increases the healthfulness of your environment. Of course, wear sunscreen when you're exposed to direct sunlight for longer than 20 minutes. Do everything with the right measure. Maintain balance in life between work, rest and exercise. Count your calories and measure your food intake. Count your steps and whatever you do, do it in prayer and do not neglect your relationship with God. Now more than ever, air your house and spend time outdoors. A well-aired environment has been shown to reduce the risk of infection. Oxygen keeps your brain healthy and your body working. We often do not notice when the air in our room gets stuffy. So let's just make it a habit to take a few deep breaths by the open window ever so often. Spend time outdoors, walking, exercising or gardening, all of which will not only maintain physical, but most importantly, our mental health. Good sleep is important. A good night's rest can change our outlook and give us the energy we need to face a new day. To sleep well, follow basic sleep hygiene. Keep your bedroom tidy and clean. Put your electronics aside before bedtime. Dim the lights, air the bedroom well, and do not eat heavy meals or exercise vigorously three hours before turning in. And do something relaxing, like taking a bath, journaling, or reading. With a healthy and balanced lifestyle, your sleep will improve too. Present your concerns and your worries to God before laying your head on the pillow. Especially in times of uncertainty, it is important to trust 
because we know that there is a God who watches over us and receives us with forgiveness and grace. Whatever the future may hold, we are in his loving embrace at all times. We can trust that better times are coming and wonderful things are in store for us. So what are the government guidelines currently and what does our general conference have to say? We must remember it is not possible to avoid getting ill completely, even if we adhere to the health principles. We are all at risk of being infected with the coronavirus, some of us more than others, and we have learned that this disease does not stop at our church congregation's doorstep. We still need to do everything to avoid exposure to this deadly virus, and moreover, as responsible Christians, we must make sure that we do not endanger others. The General Conference of the Adventist Church has made it clear that we are facing a dangerous foe. Our own health institutions around the world, as well as the health professionals in our own churches, have participated in research and development of treatment and prevention. Let us remember that we are worshipping together with doctors, nurses, pharmacists, therapists of all kinds who are tirelessly serving us day and night. We as Adventists are proud to have such a large number of health professionals in our midst whom we can trust and who are witnessing daily through their service. The General Conference has made it clear that the rules and guidelines by our governments are not random, but based on evidence and study. By adhering to them, we show respect and love for our neighbor and keep each other safe. Now that churches are about to reopen, we have to follow government guidelines more than ever, especially during worship. Please practice the standard universal precautions. Clean hands frequently with soap and water and use hand sanitizer. Follow the coughing and sneezing etiquette. Sneeze into your folded arm, cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze. And of course, wear a face covering in many public indoor settings, such as shops and places of worship, our churches, and on public transport. This is the law. The use of a mask has been shown to prevent those who have infection from spreading the virus, but it is not protective generally. The mask will protect others, not yourself. And that is why it is important to maintain a social distance at least two meters or six feet between yourself and other people in an indoor setting. Avoid close contact with those who are coughing or sniffling. Avoid touching or rubbing your eyes, nose and mouth. And make use of the rapid lateral flow tests at least twice a week. One in three people with COVID-19 do not have symptoms but are still infectious and can give the virus to others. You can order the tests online or by phone or pick them up at a designated collection site. We recognize that getting vaccinated is a personal choice and nobody will be coerced or forced. And of course, everybody can worship in church, provided they follow the guidelines. The General Conference of the Adventist Church, however, recommends getting the COVID vaccine. If you have any medical concerns, talk to your GP, or your brothers and sisters in church who work in a health profession. There's also guidance available on any concerns you might have from a spiritual or religious perspective. And of course, when you have symptoms like a temperature, a persistent cough, a runny nose or a loss of taste and smell, stay at home. Contact your GP or dial 111 and take a PCR test to confirm the diagnosis. So how should we act in church? While our churches can open again, we have to be aware that we will not be able to worship the way we used to. It is important to maintain social distancing, and that is why fewer people will be able to worship at the same time. Wearing masks and not singing hymns will be important to keep our fellow church members safe. Potlucks are on hold for the moment, but we will be able to visit and spend time with each other, two households at a time. It is up to us to show responsibility for each other and obey the guidelines and rules to protect ourselves 
each other and our church organization. Let us lead by example in showing that we are responsible citizens, not only of this country, but also of the kingdom of God. Let us show the patience of the saints and overflow with love, kindness and faithfulness. This is the time for calm and steady trust in the Lord we love and serve. Let us move forward together in this challenging time, carefully and patiently, step by step. The spirit of prophecy tells us we have nothing to fear for the future, except we forget how God has led us in the past and his teachings. We have an opportunity to bear witness to the faith that is within us, reflecting hope and demonstrating stability through the assurance that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Please keep checking the NEC website for updates and guidelines. You will find there risk assessment templates, guidelines for church opening and general information. Please remember that facts and not fear will stop the spread of the virus. Check your facts and information before you share it and do not share anything from unofficial sources. Challenge myths and misinformation where you encounter it. And most of all, choose your words carefully and treat each other with kindness, respect and tolerance. Your GP will be better suited to provide you with specific medical information. But if you have concerns or questions or just need a reassuring chat, do not hesitate to contact me. I am here to answer your questions or arrange a health presentation or meeting in your church. Please also remember your brothers and sisters in your own churches who are health professionals and who are more than happy to help. Let us uplift each other in prayer. Let us keep each other safe and let us trust in the Lord. His will be done and his kingdom come. God bless.